Um, okay, hello. Welcome to the second project of the series of projects called Projects. Um, if you can tell, there wasn't a video last week um, because I didn't have time. There was also there was also wasn't a blog post about the original project last week because I didn't have time. But better <laughs> did I say better? Wow, better now than never. Yeah, that's the thing I was gonna say. Better. Where did that come from? So yeah. Oh my gosh, you can see how professional this is already. So. Um, projects two out of the series of projects. I actually did this last week, so they were they'll there blah blah blah. Wow, my voice. There will be another video coming this week at some point, which I don't really know yet because I haven't actually decided on what project I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do yet, but anyway, I have to decide that in a couple of days. Oh well, but. Um, I'm recording this video now, so focus, Terry, focus. So this is the um, second project that I did, which was creative coding, and I've done a, my fair bit of creative coding before um, with stuff like processing, but Open Framework is relatively new to me. Um, I have played around with it when I fr um, used the Connect, because Connect, the version 2, still had a bunch of frameworks that I just couldn't be bothered with. So um, I used Open Frameworks for the majority of my Connect programs, which all turned out turned out pretty cool. But this one uh, is just like just going through Open Framework and just playing around with the meshes. Because whenever I'm doing creative coding, meshes is always the favorite my favorite thing to always um, mess around with. Because you know meshes looks just really cool, and you can pull off some really neat effects. So I followed the mesh tutorial on Open Framework. So that's I that's what I learned. I learned how like more stuff that you can do with open framework so if you can see this through this code a lot of the code is just copy paste like a lot of this code is copy paste if you just will go through the um, tutorial but you know some of it I just changed around some of the variables to get the desired thing that I wanted um so yeah so I decided to play around with the meshes thing because meshes are cool and open framework seems fun and I, and I really liked open framework. I think I'm going to play around with open framework with a lot more in the um, the future because it just makes a lot of things easier. For anything that I feel like I want to make in speed, like if speed is really important to me, I'm definitely going to work with this. This was a really fun thing that I built. So yeah, I guess let's get started. So obviously this program it's um it's from the mesh tutorial and the open framework thing um so i went about halfway through the tutorial when they got to the point where the hubble space telescope picture they made a mesh out of it and then they made a jiggle i thought that was absolutely wonderful like they made the thing wiggle and i th and i love that so i wanted to um i was thinking of like making a video portrait of it so that's why this is called wobble video mesh i was um Cause because I was programming this late in the night, uh, I decided to use the for the intensity factor. I decided to use the get brightness, so that it would only pick out the things that are bright, and then create a mesh out of that, um, and then cam dot pixel ref dot get color. So like most of this actually worked really well because Open Framework is actually really nice and how um, the code can be just transferred that easily from an image to a video. So that that was actually fairly nice. Um, and yeah, I just kept going through that. Um, I see I didn't even change most of the variable names. I just, I just changed the get brightness, which is a terrible way of coding. Like if you're going to code something like properly, don't do stuff like what I did. Like I, like what was in the of app page? Like I named something X, like what, what does that tell you? That, that tells you how bad a programmer I am. Uh, my gosh, but actually X would just not be a good program thing because I have X. Oh well, poo poo, poo hoo. Um, you know, it works. So, um, but because it's just something that I'm working on and just playing around with, I don't really care that much. But seriously, if you're like gonna program something for like realsies, you know, get your head in the game, Terry. Actually, do proper stuff. Um, so but anyway, so I did this based off of brightness, so it picks up my face, which is sort of lightened by this giant screen that I'm looking into 
my um, mod computer monitor that I'm looking into, so it would just pick up it more easily. And then I wanted to make it jiggle, like I wanted to have that effect of like wobbling around. So, and I did it in the most in the most like terrible way I could think of. So like I draw them, I made it a, a method which draws the variables. I'm um, not variables. It draws the mesh, but it um, because I needed to update the mesh every time the video changes. But because I wanted all the individual points to wobble, I only wanted to update the frame every so often, or like create a new mesh every so often. So if the frame is new, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just subtract x, cause like if x is less than zero, um, then x equals two. <laughs> so like this part's kind of weird, but x equals two, frames equals two, else. What this basically means is that Actually, what does that mean? Oh, th you know it's a bad sign if I can't even read what I'm trying to um do. Oh, I see. So, ah uh, man, that was that was like a tiny burp that I just said a micro burp. So, <laughs> so frame new, um, it subtracts x and x is originally zero, so it's obviously negative. So if it's negative, it um, if it's less than that, then it just goes to here. If frames is less than it goes to zero, then it goes to that. And what this bit does is it's really counterintuitive. Like, I don't know why I couldn't have just thought of a better way of counting than this really obscure thing. I will probably switch that up, but I, it was late in the night, and I just wanted something that worked, and that was... Ah, well, why did I do that? That's just... Ah, well, hide, hide. Um... <laughs> But anyway, that basically skips it every, um, that basically pauses the camera, that, it doesn't pause the camera, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't update the mesh every single frame, because I didn't want it to update the mesh every single frame, I wanted to update the mesh every 60 or 30 frames, um, I actually have key presses that changes how, um, how many, the frames that it would, so it would stick on, because, so that the, if the mesh doesn't update, the mesh is able to go through this whole bit of code, um, which makes it wibbly wobbly. Um, and then I had all the variables set to key presses so I can actually work stuff out. Displacement is basically like how much the each, um, the vertexes wibble and wobble. The wobble speed is how fast they wobble. The time scale. Um, yeah, the time scale. The intensity threshold, that's the actual variable that I'm using to actually filter some of the meshes out and not filter any of them in. And the intensity, the intensity is, in this case, is brightness. So any pixel on the actual video that is brighter than um, a variable, an intensity threshold, and the intensity threshold is just some, um, um, I think I have a set of two, 150 the default. Yeah, it's 150. 50. Um, 150 units, then it's gonna um, pick up more meshes and less resolution. Resolution is to change how much points there are. Um, I, c I can never go be less than three um, because the way I have this isn't true resolution. Like this isn't true resolution. This is like a weird resolution because because I'm trying to put the vert the points every so often. I said that to resolution, so like the higher the resolution, this number, the higher the resolution number, the the less detail there is in the picture, which is really counterintuitive and it is not like, the that, that is not resolution. It is not, but it kind of seems fitting because resolution is how much stuff is there. And um, so if this is less, um, if this is less, then there's more, and if that's more, then there's less. Got that? Great. So frame rate, frame rate, it, it's, again, okay, this is not true frame rate at all. This is not, I don't know, this, oh, I made terrible, see, terrible, terrible example here. Don't follow what I'm doing. But frame rate is, um, goes back to here and how many frames I'm actually skip, um, pausing on before updating the mesh. So if my frame rate, which isn't an actual true frame rate, let me repeat that, is set to like five, um, it's gonna, um, skip five frames before updating. So, or it's gonna wait through five frames before updating, and so that's basically okay. You heard all the programming stuff. Um, I haven't explained all. Th those are all the stuff that I actually changed. The rest of it is basically the same code that I got from the tutorial. Tutorial. Um, I don't need this because that's an image. Actually, um, this is a new file, so I don't even have that. Let's do that. 
So, um, camera, that's, that's what I got, camera initiate, camera, all that. This basically, um, gets the color of it, then gets the brightness, compares the brightness to an arbitrary threshold, then adds a mesh, adds a vertex to a mesh based on position and gives it a color. Um, and then it goes down to the connection distances, which ha um, when a line is drawn between a point and another point, that's what this code bit does. And see, so it adds the index based on connection distance. And here it basically makes it wibble and wobble. And it takes the um, the vertex and then it mo it gives it a purlin noise, I believe is what they use to call it, um, which basically alters it into like kind of like almost tiny movements, tiny random movements. It's not like scatter movement, but it's like tiny. I also set the background to zero because I think that was appropriate. Okay, let's get started then. Um, I'm going to teach you the, I'm going to tell you the actual buttons that I use. Because like, I, I, again, I used really obscure buttons because I was just trying to find whatever I thought kind of worked well. Um, well okay, let's hope this works. Oh, oh, fantastic. It works fine. So, um, I'm going to just set it up so that I can see both of the things at the same time. So obviously, right here, um, you see the original camera version. That's what I actually re look in real life. Hi. Um, and this is what the actual the meshes are doing. So obviously, because of the intensity threshold of this, it's not actually picking up a lot of stuff because the intensity threshold is huge. Now, in order to lower the intensity threshold, I have to do page down. Um, in page down, um, allows the, I guess, the bar of, like, what it can pick up to get lowered. So now you can see a bit more of me in the mesh. I'm going to lower that all the way down to, like, zero. So you can see my background, too, because I think that actually looks cool. So, yay. So that's what I look like. Um, and then A and D control the, f the so-called frame rate. I did the air quotes. See, you can see it. So A, um, D makes it go, um, subtracts from the frames, so it makes it go faster, again, counterintuitive. And then you can set it to 1, which is basically kind of like real time. It doesn't do the, not really real time, but it doesn't do the wobble at all. So like, um, it's, it's not fast, as you can see, but like, that looks cool, I think, right? But this is the fun bit, like, you can up the frame rate which by pressing A. And if you up the frame rate to like 30, uh, 30. So as you can see, even though I'm moving from the camera, it's not updating the mesh until 30 frames have gone oh, um, after it. So like that's what it does. Now you might be asking, why would you, know, why wouldn't you want to update the mesh every 30, um, every frame? Well, because then you couldn't see th the image wobble, which was the entire point of this. Like I wanted to make a picture of my face in like a really cool meshy thing while it's wobbling in a really weird organic manner. So I'm gonna up the, I'm gonna up the frame rate again, rate frame rate as in like it's not really frame rate, that's just what I called it, to sixty. So we have like a bit of time before it updates. Um and then I'm gonna set the deep displacement up to about oh it's laggy because I'm recording the screen at the same time. It's it's not as laggy, but it's like so, yeah. I'm gonna up it to like one point actually I'm gonna up it to like two point seven five. 2.75 and you can already see that the image oh oh that's terrible um right click ma lets you like rotate and move around here left click lets you zoom in and if you look zoom in a bit more you can see that it kind of wibbles oh my gosh that looks terrible because like i'm recording this actually like if i lower if i raise the resolution or like lower the resolution if i if i make this easier on the resolution which you can change with w and s um, I have to add one to make it less, don't I? Four. That, yes! Okay, so uh, that's an acceptable speed. So as you can see, it wobbles. Like, um, it has this weird organic wobble movement that I absolutely love. Again, um, left click to make it rotate around. Um, this left click lets you zoom in and out. And I'm going to zoom out a bit. Um, and then you can have this really weird thing that I absolutely love. Like, that looks awesome. And... Uh, WS, what does WS do? Oh yeah, WS was the resolution control. A, um, AD controls how f much, f um, frames you're gonna skip. Um, the arrow keys also does stuff. Displacement, displacement is basically like how far 
these guys like wobble. So like if I really raise the displacement, where can which I can do with the up arrow, like it wobbles more and more and more and more and more. Um, and then I'm gonna put that back down to like two. I like two. Two is an acceptable number. Oh my gosh, it's slowing down so much. <laughs> like I haven't optimized this at all, so it's gonna be really bad. Um, and plus I'm recording something on a laptop. Um, that's not really good, so obviously something's wrong there, but like, see, it did stuff. Um, and then the right and left arrow keys, that controls the wobble speed. So like, if I up the wobble speed by a lot, then like, these guys are gonna wiggle really fast, or like, really small bit tidbits. But if I like, lower it to, uh, to like, two, then it's gonna take its time and like, wiggle like that. Um, like, I wonder why it's like, oh yeah, it's because, yeah. So, but, um, and also the, it's 3D, as you can see, that's why I added, um, that's why there's the easy cam. The 3D effect is done by the brightness. So, like, I recommend doing this in, like, a really dark room where the uh, 3D actually, like, makes sense. Because, like, ten things tend to get brighter the closer they are to a screen, um, to something, especially if you have, like, a laptop which is bright on the screen and the webcam's right in front of it. So I can add like really cool effects if I do like put my arms out like Ooh! and if I wait for the screen to update. Come on, update screen. I don't want to do this forever. Yeah, okay. If, um, and as you, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But like, as you can see, it kind of goes up. Um, the arms kind of go up. Actually, I think that might be due to the fact uh, that there's like restrictions within the code. But anyway, so like, I find this really cool. Like I, I played around with the meshes you know, using the connect before, but like this is really cool for me. It's the the aspect of like the webcam doing something like this. So anyway, I went on for a bit of a ramble. If you want to play w with the thing that I made, um, which like yeah, I guess you could do. Um, there should be a download link in the description for the executable file. But I'm also gonna provide the full source code in the description as well because I recommend um oh also oh, that's an error. I haven't fixed that actually. Boop. Continue. So and I also recommend playing around with the actual source code itself. Particularly start playing around with the of primitive um start playing around with of that primitive. Start playing around with these because the, if you pl um playing around with these then it's a lot of fun. So like you could do something like a loop, um, and then you you could start playing something around with a loop, um, and then you could also do stuff like um, lines and stuff like that. Uh, that's yeah, that's still right code. Um, and then you could also play around with what this actually is. So you could base this off of dot get not brightness, but you can get light um, lerp. Yeah, no, you can get lightness too. You can also get saturation, um, stuff like that. And it's really, yeah, you could do a lot of cool stuff with this. So, like, you know, download the source code, play around with it. Um, also, I'm also going to include a blog that I followed to get Visual Studio's um, um, open framework working with Visual Studio 2013. Because I didn't know that open framework does, um, don't, they don't have, like, an actual thing that you can download for open frameworks for Visual Studio 2013. They only have it up to 2012, but I felt um there's a blog that I follow, um which uh, which is basically where I learned all the stuff about how to set open frameworks up with the Connect version two, um and that and that old blog also told tells you how to um get Visual Studios working with open framework even though Visual Studios is in 2013. So yeah, thanks for listening. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't edit it until, like, the end of this week. So, actually, you might see this video on, like, two weeks from when it was supposed to be up. Oh, well. Man, I, I'm getting, I'm falling behind, and it's only on my second thing. Maybe I shouldn't have done it on the second semester of school, in which I have finals and AP exams to study for. Maybe this was a kind of a bad idea. Oh, well. I put myself in this situation. But anyway... That's the thing. Go play around with it. Go change the source code. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the guy that made the open frameworks work with Visual 2013. I'll also put a link for the tutorial that I follow for the original thing that I did um, with the, just the picture and wobbling thing. 
Um, and then you can just, um, yeah, play around with the source code to get the camera working and stuff like that. Anyway.